Welcome to the Drum Shuffle, a podcast offering insights, perspectives, and conversations for drummers. I'm your host, Jamie Eads. Hey, how's it going out there, everybody? Welcome to the Drum Shuffle. Jamie Eads here joining you as always. This is episode 32. We have a fantastic guest for you today. Uh, We have the great educator, Grant Menifee, from up in the uh, Baltimore, Maryland area. Grant, of course, uh, I I call him the drum teacher to the stars. He has just a ton of great knowledge to share with us here in just a moment, so please stay tuned. Lost Cabos Drumsticks may be the best kept secret from drummers today. Lost Cabos Drumsticks makes the finest tools to touch a drummer's hands in the business. The best news, almost every popular stick size is available in both white hickory and red hickory. If you don't know what red hickory is, it's made from the heartwood of the hickory tree, unlike regular white hickory, which is made from sapwood. Red hickory drumsticks will hold up to even the hardest hitting drummers. Their durability comes from the density of the wood, but they do not sacrifice the feel. Please visit LosCabosDrumsticks.com to learn more about their products. And don't forget to ask at your favorite retailer for Los Cabos Drumsticks. As I mentioned, we're going to be joined today by Grant Menifee, just one of the all-time great drum instructors from the Baltimore, Maryland area. Uh, Some of Grant's former students include Nate Morton uh, of The Voice fame, uh, Matt Halpern, who is currently with Periphery, uh, John Theodore with Queens of the Stone Age. He's just really taught a who's who of popular drumming. And Grant, of course, is a very accomplished uh, uh, drummer himself, a graduate of Berkeley College of Music up in Boston. Uh, he's written articles for all the major drum publications, so we were just pleased to have Grant join us, and what a super nice guy he is. I hope you'll enjoy this, and help me welcome to the Drum Shuffle, Grant Menifee. Grant, good morning. How are you, man? Good morning, Jamie. Great to talk to you. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for taking time to come on the drum shuffle. Um, you know we've we've had uh, one at least one of your students on the great Nate Morton from The Voice right. was was on here not too long ago. So it's been a, a long time coming for you and I to connect, but we certainly mm-hmm. appreciate your time to come on this morning. No, no problem. Well, so Grant, you know, I mean. I, it's it's probably uh, telegraphed by now. You know, we like to start at the beginning. Tell everybody how you got behind the drum set originally. Um, I would say, yeah, you know, you're looking at the like the late '60s, uh, being a kid, and you know, of course, at that time, it was that was the big Beatles thing. Yeah, it was a few years after that, and. Yeah, everybody. I mean, all the guys growing up in the neighborhood, we were all interested in music and, you know, just everywhere you look, everybody was trying to play something. So, um, you know, at about eight or nine, I just thought, man, I like, I like these drums. I like drums. And so I got a pair of sticks somehow and just started playing on everything. And very, you know, just a similar way a lot of people get into um, playing an instrument or drumming. And then my parents got me a, you know, one of those cheap Sears sets or whatever. And of course, then I, I played on that for six months, broke that up and then went from there and, and started taking lessons in school. I actually started taking private lessons at about nine with a band director at my elementary school. And uh, that was good. It, it got me started. I started to learn how to read music, and um, you know. And then I had like a cheap one of those cheap. At that time, they, uh, everybody had these Japanese drum sets. They were probably all made by Pearl, but they had you know different names on them. But yeah, they were real drums. And you know, I just played those, and just like a lot of other guys, you get you get started, and you it's addicting, and before you know it, you're playing a couple hours a day, and 
you know, and uh, luckily I had good parental support, and uh, that's how I got started. And by the time I was, you know, I stayed in the band program, played, you know, all my neighborhood guys, we play together, and, you know, my basement seemed to be a kind of a spot where we all played a lot, and, you know, my mom was always supportive, and, you know, made sure we had sweet tea and cake and, you know, said, go <laughs> ahead, guys, make your make your noise, you know. <laughs> and um, so we did all that. And um, then by the time I was 14, then I started to say, hey, I like this. You know, I want to study this more. So my uh, junior high band director, he uh, he said, yeah, you got to get some private lessons. So I started taking private lessons with a guy named Charles Memphis. We just called him Chuck, but he was the band of uh, the percussion department chairman at the Peabody Conservatory in Baltimore, which I lived south of at that time. And so I would take the bus in and take lessons from him and you know, that led me up to all through high school. So that's how I got started. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I am a huge fan of the television show The Wire, and, and you mentioned oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you mentioned Baltimore, and, and I yeah. got I, I, you know, I've got to say, your your voice is central casting out of The Wire. I mean, we if for, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> for anybody that's that's unfamiliar with the Baltimore accent, Grant, yeah. our guest today, I, I mean, it is spot on, full on Baltimore, which is <laughs> wonderful. I love it. It is like a hybrid little southern accent mixed you know mixed it it's it's just yeah well it's it's fantastic well growing up in baltimore now you know i know that um you know you said you stayed involved all through school you know Mm -hmm. i I know that there is a great tradition of of you know sports high school sports in the baltimore area right did you do marching band for like you know football games and all that stuff no, believe it or not, in the uh, in our our area here, marching band was it wasn't really a huge thing, you know, like like out in the Midwest or you know other other places. Um, it is now. It, it is now. Most most of the high school students that I teach, you know, but at that time, I mean, we're we're kind of like in a quirky area. We. Um, I'll give you an example. Like my the local high school near where I live, Catonsville High School, they don't have a marching band, but what they do have is a steel drum band. <laughs> and it's just, you know, we we just have this weird musical mix around here. Uh a lot of gospel guys, um a lot of country music, um uh, a lot of jazz. So it's just re- and rock, of course. And it's so it's just really, really eclectic here. You know, it's just like where the north meets the south and you know, it, it it's just weird. But no, I didn't have that marching band background, but I did with I did do a lot of rudimental studies though. Okay. That that I did a tremendous amount of with with uh Chuck Memphis and he made sure I had that background. So that that was there, but I didn't march. No. I gotcha. Okay. Well, then, then of course, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you went to Berkeley, uh, you know, College mm-hmm. of Music up in Boston. So right. I mean, you, you kind of have to have at least a little bit of of the rudimental chops when you walk through the door, I would assume. I, I think so. I mean, it, it helps. I mean, it certainly helps with your, your overall technique. Um, but you know, technique is only going to get you so far in an environment like that. Um, you know, I, in my case, I was I was very well prepared as far as uh, technique, reading, um, even my even my theory studies. You know, way ahead of the game. But what I needed, and and what what I got immediately as soon as I got there was real good uh, playing experience with real good players and really getting down to how do you play as a drummer because none of that, you leave that at the door. Technique, you know, 
if you're not musical and know how to play in each situation, none of that matters. So yeah. uh, it, that's what it boils down to. You know, when you walk in those doors at a place like Berkeley, you, you realize that that's not what Elvin Jones was all about. That's not what, you know, uh, Max Roach, Art Blakey, those guys, you know, their their thing was all groove and musicality and playing the right thing. And then you get into the pop stuff and you realize that, okay, what well, why was Hal Blaine such a good drummer and, you know, Steve Gadd? And and then you really get into, you know, splitting hairs on how did they even play a groove and make it work within the song, and they were splitting hairs within each beat. So Berkeley kind of, um, you know, I, I put technique aside to a certain extent while I was there and then just more explored musicality and how to become a, a really good drummer. And I, boy, that was priceless, really priceless. Well, so, I, mean, I mean, and then we got heavily into things like polyrhythms. I took polyrhythms class and all that. But again, none of that matters if you can't use it in right. a proper way. And so I was able to take that with me from Berkeley and, and thank God, because I, I was able to play that way and then instill that in my students. Yeah. Well, so, it, now, was it, and I don't know the answer to this, you know, so I'm asking a question I don't already know the answer to, but uh, which, you know, they say that's the number one rule of journalism. Don't ever ask a question that you don't yeah. already know the answer to. But did you decide to be a teacher while you were at Berkeley or, or were you going to Berkeley specifically to to be a better musician i mean was your path i, I want to be a rock star or a jazz star or did you decide right away that you wanted to be an instructor yeah i always knew that you know and people always told me my my educators that you know when i was in high school they kind of had a sense that that i had that natural ability to teach and help with others, you know, in in the pro band programs. And so, you know, that was instilled in my head. I didn't know. So what I did was it, it you know, I was walking walking the fence on that while I was at Berkeley. So so I thought well, I better be prepared either way. You know, if I decide <clears throat> when I walk out these doors that you know, I'm heading out to Nashville or I'm heading out to L.A. and, you know, then I better be prepared for that. If I if I decide that I'm going to be an educator, I better be prepared for that. So I took a program at at Berkeley that I felt it was the most difficult um, program to get into at that time. And I'm not even sure if they still have it, but they um, – it was called, uh, oh gosh, it was a uh, performance degree, but it was in traditional percussion. But you got to realize at Berkeley that even though they say traditional percussion, and you're you're playing drum set mostly, and then on top of that, then I was studying timpani, marimba, vibraphone, um, all of that, you know. Uh, so they were. It was a difficult program. It was difficult to get into, also, because I had to audition. After at, at Berkeley, you everybody pretty much takes the same freshman um, program, and then in the middle of your your year, your freshman year, then you decide, okay, what path you're going to go. What what are you going to focus on? And so I wanted to take this traditional um, performance and percussion. So I thought, oh, man, I'm ready. You know, I prepared this audition. I walk in. There's Gary Chafee. Okay, let me hear you play. <laughs> man, he failed me right away. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what he did, though, and here's what, here's what he did. He, he didn't just throw me out and say, you know, go pick something else. He goes, he gave me a lesson. He actually sat down and spent, you know, some time with me and talked with me, gave me some suggestions, 
and uh, Gary Chafe was amazing. He was right to the point. Uh, advice that 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 he would give you would be advice that you could take with you for a lifetime. So I was disappointed. I walked out. I started practicing. And I came back about a month later and passed the audition and did what he said. And yeah. the rest is history. But yeah, it was that was inv- that was a great experience. Really good. Well, I mean, you know, we're still studying all of his stuff. I mean, all of us, I think, you know, we, we may not know that it's Gary Chafee stuff, but we're all. Oh, man. It's, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just ubiquitous in the world of drumming. We're all learning. Of course his stuff all the time um you know and and i think what's cool about berkeley is you know and i don't even know what years you were there but i'm sure you can say well i went to school with x y z who are who are all all over these records you know so you're always there with the greatest players and it it you just can't help but lift your own playing when you see what everybody else around you is doing and while you're there, a lot of it, you, a lot of guys you don't even know right. that they're going to be the future big big guys. You know, you're rubbing elbows with, you know, people that that really, in a sense, sometimes they don't even make a lot of noise while they're there. But a few years out, man, they're like the top drummer in certain areas, or you know, the top educator or whatever. You know, so it's really cool to see all that pan out after after years yeah for sure well when you got done at berkeley you know i i know that you spent time playing in a lot of different bands and and things Mm -hmm. like that but did you immediately did you immediately go back to baltimore and start teaching right away pretty much yeah i uh yeah i um i came back to the area and uh, you know as soon as i came into town the phone started to ring, and a couple of the calls were um, like my my former teacher, who at that point Chuck Memphis was pretty much retired. He was semi retired, but he was teaching here and there. and And uh, he said, "You know, I got this one this one studio here where why don't you take the students? You know, I'm just gonna give it to you." And so I can't remember how many students it was, but um, I said, okay. So I did that, and immediately that started to grow. And at the same time, I was playing, you know, five, six nights a week. And, yeah, and that's how it got started. And I realized that, hey, I'm pretty good at this teaching. I like it. Um, I always had a lot of students. So it just kind of went that way. You know, yeah, I was very lucky. Yeah. Well, and I think the cool thing about teaching is, is when you have a studio and, and, you know, I've seen, you know, at least photos of your studio that you have set up, it's, you know, it's very well equipped. Um, you know, it, it's right there, you know, where you live and you can make a good living at it. So, I mean, yeah, a, a lot of us, you know, I, I don't live in a musical hotbed. I'm in central Kentucky. You know, it's hard uh-huh. to get enough gigs to make a living. So, you know, I, I would assume for someone who is a gifted teacher it allows you to make a living in the music industry without spending 200 nights away from your family. Right. Which is, which is really nice, really nice. Um, we're not, I wouldn't say it's very musical around here, but we're certainly not in a hotbed of, uh, music here. We're, we're really not, but there is, um, there is a lot of music. There's a lot of local music, a lot of it's good. Some of it's not that good. But the, <laughs> the point is, people are playing. I mean, right. they're. Uh, I live in a community. They. I mean, it's funny. They. They even call it Music City, Maryland. You know, but. But it. Um, but there really, really are a lot of people here playing. It's just part of our culture, and you know, extends everything from bluegrass, country, jazz, R and B, a lot of gospel. Um, you know, but everybody plays <laughs> and there's a lot of money here. The, the money, the, the economic 
situation here between Baltimore and D.C. is very good because a lot of people work for the government. So yeah. there's tons of money flying around and people have a little extra money to, to spend. So and that that environment, you know, yeah, uh, it just sets it up for for ripe to be able to teach that people have the, the money and, and they want to do it. Well, and so, but but if you're going to make a living at it, you still got to be really good. Oh because yeah. Because even though I would say well, everything I said about the environment and everything, there's very few people in this area doing what I'm doing and making a good living. Um, you know, where you could raise two, three kids in a middle, upper middle class environment. Yeah, you've got to be good, and you got to be on your game. Well, and, and you certainly are. I mean, no, no well, doubt about it. <laughs> and I still try. <laughs> well, you know, I'm curious. Do you? Uh, are most of your students? Um, you, you know, I, I'm going to say junior students. Meaning, are they high school aged and younger? I mean, I know you teach adults as well, but is the mm-hmm. the majority of your practice the younger guys and girls? I would say if you had to do a median age, um, it's it's always been middle to high school as far as the average age or median age. Uh, a lot of high, a lot of college age guys, uh, a lot of guys that are out there playing um, semi pro here in the areas, and um, I got a ton of them. They're usually those guys are in their twenties and thirties who they might have a day job, but they also play two to three nights a week. And, you know, so they're they're kind of like semi-pros. But, yeah, I, if I had to say the median age would be high school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe early college. Well, now, of course, you know, anybody that does any research on, on you, they're going to know that you've had some, some really – great students over the years now of course we had the great nate morton on our show um Mm -hmm. back a few months ago and and nate was one of your students i know you also taught um john theodore from queens of the stone age uh matt halpern uh Mm -hmm. who's now in periphery who is just a a great god (laughs) what a drummer that guy what a good drummer yeah Yeah. he was just over the house a couple weeks ago (laughs) he just yeah what a great guy the hardest working student i've ever taught really (laughs) oh my god yeah (laughs) well yeah and and his family is super too you know i'm still in contact with his family and uh he um he came over to the studio a couple weeks ago and and gave my son a lesson oh wow he's also a drummer and and John, my son John had set that up, but but yeah, we we love Matt, <laughs> but uh, all those guys as you mentioned, I mean, they're really good guys. Aside from uh, good drummers, well, you know, we we asked Nate, you know, how did you get your start? And you know, he kind of went through the whole story about how mm-hmm. you know Animal from the Muppets, and and if I'm yeah. re- if <laughs> you know if I'm recalling everything correct, but he said the guy that really changed my life was Grant Menifee because I started taking lessons from Grant, and and you know you had told Nate, look, if this is something you really want to do, there's this college up in Boston that you can go to. And you can probably learn enough to make a living doing this. And and Nate said, you know, I, I think he was in an engineering program at the University of Maryland yeah. at the time. And he and he was like, well, yeah, I'm not so good at engineering math and calculus. And, you know, yeah, drumming sounds a lot better right now. <laughs> so. yeah. He may not have told you, but when he was at, he, he was, you know, he was doing that engineering program for a bet. I think he, he may have done two semesters there, but he, he, he would always wind up going down to the music department and sitting in with the jazz band. And then, you know, here, here are these music majors. And he's, he's like making everybody else think, whoa, here's this engineering major. He's coming in and kicking our butts. <laughs> But yeah, he yeah, he didn't last too long there. Well, I mean, I think it's cool that you that you're able to see in your students, hey, you've got something here. You've got a gift. You should chase it. You know, is that something that you 
see immediately or is it a, a th- something that you develop over time with your students? Well, it, it, it can be both, Jamie. I mean, it really can be, it can be both. I think, I think one of the things about being a really good educator that I've found over the years is that you can't really, sometimes you can't tell. And that's why I never give up on a student. Um, I've had some of these guys that we're talking about, I mean, they never said to me, hey, I want to be a drummer, or, you know, hey, uh, you know, or the, were they practicing four hours a day in high school or whatever. But all of a sudden, man, just things kicked in and, you know, and and they did it. So you never, I would never, I never give up on anybody because I don't want anybody ever coming back here saying you wrote me off <laughs> and look at look at what I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never wanted that to happen. So I don't. The only time I give up on somebody is if they absolutely just totally don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I hear a lot, you know, I'll go out and play a gig. And and Mm -hmm. one of the the greatest things that that I ever get told is somebody, you know, that that watches me play, they will come up afterwards and say, wow, what a great drummer you are. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't happen very often, trust me. But (laughs) with that, well, it should. We should support each other. Right. But when it does, almost invariably, if it's somebody that comes from a non-musical background, they say, I I always wanted to learn to play drums, but Mm -hmm. I'm just, I just don't have enough coordination. And invariably my answer to them is always when you were born, you were not coordinated enough to walk. When you learned to walk, you were not coordinated enough to, to run, you know, anybody that can swing a golf club and count to four, you know, can learn to play drums, right? Yeah. I, that's, that's true to a certain extent. But you know what? What they're they're from their point of view, they're watching you up there play, and you're doing all this stuff and playing, and <clears throat> they they've always thought, hey, I'd like to do that. But to them, they are so amazed at what you're doing. That's like you're up there performing magic to them. To to them, they're like, how in the world would I ever do this? You know. So that's that's probably what that's coming from. Jamie, they, they they look at you and they're thinking, man, this guy is doing magic. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I can see that, too. But, you know, yeah. I, I always say to everybody, you know, if, if you can, you know, dribble a basketball and, right. and, and, and count, you can sit down. And if you put in enough time, I think you always get out of you know, drumming what you put into it. And, you know, as we get older, you know, uh, at least in my situation, you know, as I get older, I keep my drums in cases, you know, and and I just kind of go from gig to gig and session to session. I don't, you know, I don't force myself to practice the way I should, you know, but Mm -hmm. I could continue growing if I just put in the time, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and when we get old and lazy, (laughs) you know, we, we don't practice the way we should, but tell me a little bit about, you know, obviously you're teaching for hours upon hours every day, but do you grant Menifee get time in your studio to just sit down and work on things yourself? Yes. Um, what I do is I keep a, I keep a, a, a few books, maybe if I'm working on some books or transcriptions or something new or something that I've heard, and I'll put it aside. And I'll put it maybe under like one of my floor toms. Somebody's five minutes late, I pull it out, and then I'll work on it for five minutes. And then then put it back down as soon as the guy comes in and then just continue to do that until, okay, I got that. Now let me try something else. So I'm constantly, I constantly have my little stack and, you know, of course there's YouTube that I can access with that, with those transcriptions or new book or whatever I'm working on. Um, You know, so I'm constantly wanting to learn still every day. I, go into that studio, I'm going to learn something. Well, that's... Plus I have my sticks in my hands seven, eight, seven to nine hours a day. So um, 
I play most of the time with the students. Um, I didn't get into teaching not to play. Right. <laughs> Believe me. Right. So, um, my sticks are in my hands. So as they're working on fundamentals, I'm doing it too. And, you know, it, that's, that's great because that, that, you know, I'm always warmed up. Always. Well, I mean, and that's a great testament to, to your teaching style is that you're still pushing the envelope for yourself. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm going to continue to do that until, you know, forever. And and you know what? When I've met met some of the really good drummers out there, um, they're all doing that, too. And we get together, we start talking. What are you working on? What are you doing? You know, they're all they're all working on something. Yeah, for sure. I, and, and even that's... though they're they're like you know, well, we were uh, my son John and I, we were in Nashville a couple of weeks ago, and we met with John John Riley, no Jim Riley from yeah, Rascal yeah. Flag. Yeah, well, great clinician. Great guy. Yes, and yes. It, it just so we a... spent a little bit of time with him, and man, you know, he's the same way. He's you know, even though he's 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 got that responsibility as a band leader performing with that band and he's got a family man you can tell he, he you know, we started talking about what like, let's what are you working on what are you doing you know and uh so he's doing it too yeah well and, and i think that's the hallmark of of a of a great student you know even though you're the teacher you're the sensei you know yeah you're still a student at the same time you're always oh. learning so you can pass that knowledge down through the generations right Yep. And that's, that's all we're doing. We're just, pa- I'm just passing through here and trying to, to pass it along also no, uh, the best I can with as much respect to the art as I can. Yeah, for sure. Now, are you still actively playing? Do you still go out and do yeah. gigs and yeah, stuff like I, that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just did a, a, a gig Saturday with uh, some guys and you know, it, I, I sub. So people call me up, hey, we need a, you know, because I I can't, well, I'm so busy teaching, I cannot, you know, and I have a family too. So it's very tough for me to say, okay, I'm in a band and got to commit to certain amount of dates. But but yeah, I I played with this group Saturday and I had no idea if they were going to be any good or not, but they were fabulous and just had a ball playing with these guys. So yeah. Well, that's awesome. Now, over the years, you know, I, I know a lot of guys um, have gone to kind of the, the Internet delivery method, you know, Skype lessons and mm-hmm. and things like that. And, and heck, you know, I mean, you can for, you know, two or three hundred dollars, you can get Matt Chamberlain to put drum tracks on your song, you know, or, or mm-hmm. Ash sure. Stone or some of these great, great players, you know, that, that have that you know, home studio, they can just send you tracks, you know, via email or Dropbox or whatever. Now, have you gone to some of that stuff as well? So if, if somebody in, I don't know, Omaha, Nebraska says, I really want to take a lesson with Grant, can they do that nowadays? You know, I, uh, I haven't done that. And I think one of the reasons I haven't done that, um, is because well there's a couple of reasons first of all i don't have to right thank god i don't have to i mean I, you <laughs> you're know, busy I enough. enough yeah i mean i have enough guys walking through this door that i i you know i don't need to do that so i mean i'm gonna knock on wood but but you know i i yeah i've never had to do that and i like that face to face where you know i'm 12 inches from another guy and we're looking at each other and we're discussing what we're doing. And yeah, that, that's kind of tough when you're doing Skype and it's, you know, you know, I don't know. (laughs) I just, I haven't gone that route. I have some friends that do it and, uh, and maybe I'll try it, but, but, I don't know. I like the face to face. I like the person being in the room. I want to hear their tone better. You know, I want to see their bass drum, hear that, hear what they're getting out of that bass drum. What kind of sound are they getting out of that snare? And you kind of lose that 
with Skype. Yeah, I, I, to well, a certain extent, I, I agree, and and fair enough. Now, so that kind of leads me to the next question. You know, the next time I'm passing through the Baltimore area, do you allow just kind of drop in guys to come in yes. and, and get a technique brush up kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, I call my out of town guys. You know, they'll they'll give me a call or set it up and and uh they'll come through and and yeah i really enjoy that because what i'll do is is ask them what do they want to work on um you know what what's your goal here and their background and then i'll put together a, a good amount of material and then once they're in here we see how it goes and then i have more than enough material to 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 fill up their time here so they can walk out and continue to work on it for a long time. Yeah. Well, so now this is a question that I've asked Mm -hmm. all of my other, you know, great educators that I've had on the show. When you have, you know, kind of the, I call it the wet clay student, right? Mm -hmm. The the brand new student that's coming in, you know, young guy or girl, what are they all wanting to learn now? You know, do, do they come in and say, I really want to learn a Beatles song? Probably not. I mean, in, in mm-hmm. the, you know, with hip hop being, you know, kind of the, the, the driving force in popular music today, are you getting a lot of that? You know, I want to learn how to play this particular style of music or, or what do you see coming through the door? I guess is what I'm asking. They, they might have that idea in their head, but I think once they once they get in here, you know, they they start to see all this other this whole world of drumming, and you know we'll hit we'll hit those styles that they want to hit, you know. But I'm I'm going to tell them, look, we got to get you going, you know, being able to you know get some vocabulary here with some grooves, some beats, and you know, and then but I'll I'll also pull up some some music that they're interested in and we'll talk about it and maybe even try it. Um, but once they get going and they see the, the vast possibilities of what, what drumming is out there, they're like, they forget about all that. Uh, they still love that kind of music and want to play it initially, but they're like, Oh my gosh, this is a whole world that I didn't even know about. And, because they'll see the they'll see some of the other students playing it or working on it, and they're like just oh they're amazed. <laughs> so yeah, I mean we'll do everything they want to do, but it, it's going to be a lot more than that too. Um, it, as far as like somebody new that comes in here, let's say I had a kid yesterday uh, study piano, trumpet. And he's only about 12 years old now, but he walked in the door, very little drumming. He's had a drum set for a while, so I already knew he could read basics. I had to teach him a little bit of notation, um, but you know, I could I could hit get this kid going. I mean, he, you know, because he can read, he understood the basics of music and. Uh, you should have seen his face you know, when he he was playing playing certain grooves, simple grooves, but he was playing. Yeah, and he was just walk. He walked out of here on the air, you know. And that's you know, that's great. It is, and and I'm assuming that's the best payment you can ever receive is is when the dots connect in the brain of your students, yeah. and they go, "Oh my God," you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you met you had mentioned um you you had mentioned about some people they have that doubt whether they could even play anything and um I might get a beginner that that comes in with that attitude or thought that you had mentioned, and what my goal is on that if they can walk out of here playing even just that basic rock beat that we all know. You know, yeah. two and four and one and three on the bass. And if they can walk out of here playing that, even for like eight measures without stopping, oh man, that's it. They're, they're hooked. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, it, that's what happened to me as, you know, a tw- 12 year old kid. I begged my mom, begged my mom. And, you know, she finally bought me, like you said, the, the Japanese 
stencil drum set, right. you know, and yep. I set it up and I got out my Kiss records. You know, I mean, I didn't yeah. <laughs> I didn't know where else to start. There weren't many drum instructors here. And, you know, I, well, I some good, good place to start, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's I just think. it's just like if you can play along with with a record, you know, it, it's I guess it's setting you up to start forming your first garage bands. And that's exactly the path that that I took. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't come from that, you know, learned path that you do um but that's what's cool about drumming and and i guess you know to a certain extent you know rock music is that we all come from all these different um backgrounds but if you throw enough guys in the room magic starts happening you know it's it's just amazing to me that you know if you tackle your instrument whether it be drums guitar trumpet piano however you attack it if you just continually have that thirst for knowledge it's a right. such a magical place you go to and in the end the goal is that no matter how you start whether it's like you said just uh listening to music and teaching yourself or um you know having lessons and understanding theory uh in the end it all the goal is just to make good music yeah well yeah for sure (laughs) that's that's the end so like yeah you're throwing all these different people together like you said from different backgrounds but in the end it's it's got to be just good music yeah for sure well and and and, you know i think the other thing too you know and i can only uh, remember how it was for me i used to buy you know every modern drummer magazine that came out and I would immediately go back to, to all the notation stuff, you know, where somebody was teaching a groove and I would just try to figure out what does all this mean? You know, and, Mm -hmm. and I didn't have a grant Menifee in my life, you know, right down the road that I could go to. So I, you know, I just tried to start figuring those things out. And, you know, I think, nowadays with with the internet being what it is youtube you know i i giggle because you know you'll come across a video and it'll say how to play a groove in 13 7 time and invariably the guy will go man why do you want to play anything in 13 7 learn how to play <laughs> you know that was a good that was a good <laughs> you, you know the one i'm I know talking, the one about. You're talking yeah, about that it, was going it, around for a while he was like, like, man, yeah that was that was very good <laughs> yeah nobody can dance to 13 7 nobody wants to hear you do that that, you know, no, that was good. That, that, that was so funny. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, us drummers, our job is to play for a song and to make it groove and to, you know, to 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 yeah. convey the, the energy of the track, I think, you right. know, and if you're teaching your students how to do that in a musical context, kind of going back to your time at Berkeley, you know, uh, if you can do paradiddles at you know 400 bpm that's awesome you know yeah, that's that's awesome but they don't care about that there exactly it's <laughs> you know and um you know another berkeley grad that we had on the show my my good friend johnny rab you know oh yeah there who, you go who is at one time was the world's fastest drummer you know and And he told me straight up, he was like, man, I'm playing in collective soul right now. Nobody cares how fast I can play a single stroke roll. (laughs) You know, it's it's just not what it's about for me today. It's about being in a band and grooving and and all those great things. I heard him interviewed and and I thought that 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 his story was was pretty cool because I I was really glad to hear. I'd love to talk to that guy because. Um, he was on, I think he was on some show right before me one time. So I was sit, sitting there listening to him being interviewed and I thought, wow, what a great, what a great thing. He had all these chops and everything. And he realized that none of that meant anything to, you know, to the gigs that he was actually working with. And so I thought, wow, that's, that's really cool. He learned his priorities and, you know, he was still able to, in his career, take take the chops thing and and have a shtick at it, and you know, make that part of his career. But in the end, when the rubber hits the road, it's 
you know, he knew what he had to do. Absolutely. So well, I thought I, I'd love to talk to that guy sometime. Well, I can make that happen. Yeah. I, I will. <laughs> I will get you two guys connected for yeah. sure because you know, is, is he in Nashville? Um, I think um, the guys from Collective Soul are living down there now, but Johnny actually makes his home in Indianapolis. Oh, okay. All so, right. okay. Uh, so he's just right up I sixty five from Nashville, and he can be there, you know, in in three hours, I guess. But yeah, well, the next time I'm in Nashville, maybe maybe we can set up a time to to meet or something. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'll get you two guys connected offline, but um, you yeah, know, that'll be great. Yeah. Um. I I want to go back a little bit to to Nate. Um. You know, Nate is one of those guys. He's very um. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's self-deprecating. He's like, you know, I've got two chops in my bag. That's really all I know know how to do. And, you know, he said that to me and I was just like, man, I'm going to hang up on you because, you, you know, he, he plays when you watch him like on The Voice, he does yeah. every genre perfectly when he was oh, doing, sure. you know, rock star in excess. Um, yes every genre perfectly and and it's powerful and it's musical and all those things but really he can play anything he wants to play when you were teaching nate i i'm assuming it was you know i i know you saw what he was capable of but oh yeah talk a little bit about a guy like nate who now gets to play every genre every day in front of 50 million people you know, mm -hmm. Nate always, if he was exposed to a style, like, you know, I immediately got him into Latin styles, Brazilian, Afro-Cuban. He was just like, I love this. Everything. <laughs> he was just like, and he would just soak it in and he would hear it. And then he would, he'd understand, of course he could read well too. So, I mean, he was just like, you know, um, a couple of the styles that he's also getting a chance to play with here as, you know, as an adult that he never really did while he was here. He never got into the gospel style. He didn't come from that background like a lot of my other students do. So later on, when he had to do some things like that, he this is what he does. He goes to those drummers and talks to them. Or calls them up and say, "What are you doing here? What are you thinking? What's what's your goal to make this this style work?" And that's how Nate got involved with a lot of the guys in Nashville too, because um, a lot of what that shows about a lot of these guys are playing new country. They're singing all these songs, and you know, Nate didn't have a background in that, so you know, he would call up. Um, you know, Jim Riley or the guy Chris from Thomas Rhett and, you know, just on and on. And he would pick their brain and they were more than welcome to help him. And of course, when you talk to Nate, after you talk to him, he's your best friend. So that's just, that's just how he operates. And he, he wants to treat every single style with respect, you know, and that's why he, he is and has the top um drum gig on TV yeah well he he's a monster player and and yeah. he and he plays that down which amazes me you know he says I, I'm not a monster player you know I'm just lucky and you know he threw all of that credit back to you and of course his time at, at Berkeley you know and I, yeah. it, it just amazes me when he says you know I'm just a lucky guy you know Obviously, he put in the work, you know, under yeah, you did. and he did. in Boston. And, and he's also very talented. But but if you talk to most really, really successful people, of course, we're, we're all mainly talking with drummers. But it, most of the really highly successful guys that can can, you know, take a breath and look, you know, and say, wow, you know, this is great. And they have gratitude. That's the main thing. If you have gratitude, that will that will give you a foundation to, you know, to continue on and and just have a really good attitude. So uh, I think that's that's the you know I, I look back at what I've done and I'm just so, 
in my case, I'm so grateful to be able to do what I've been doing and, and, you know, I'm, I'm just so thankful of all these guys I've met and been able to teach. Um, yeah, it's all about gratitude and that's what Nate has. Yeah. And, um, I understand what he's saying. I mean, even as good as he is, he's going to look at, let's say, Vinny Cagliuta. And Vinny plays completely different. And to Nate, that's like, how in the hell can he play like that? You know? <laughs> You're right. so we're all looking at each other going, how do you do that? <laughs> well, you know, the, the cool thing about drummers, and I've said this so many times on this show, if I go see another drummer play, I'm leaving with a new lick, a new idea, a new groove. Yep. I, I'm stealing everything I can from that yep. guy and incorporating it into me as a player. And I think we all do that. And and I'm the first guy to say, no, 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 I ripped that off Nate Morton or I ripped that yeah. off Grant Menefee, <laughs> yeah. you know, whereas a guitar player goes, no, 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 I invented that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, I, I just find it amazing the the guys that you've taught and how you just continue teaching the next generations of great drummers. It's, it's amazing and to it, me. And it's continuing too. And I'm, I, again, I'm very grateful. I've got a, a couple of younger guys coming up now. Like, um, I think it was last month or the month before I had, um, uh, a, a guy named Andy stack that I had taught and they did a, an article about him in modern drummer. And he's, he's performing with, uh, a, a, really popular group called Y Oak and they have a international following. I think he was in the last issue. So I, I, uh, you know, grateful that he, he's doing well. And then I have a guy named Mike Reed who you might want to talk to both those guys. You might want to talk to eventually, but Mike Reed was, uh, just last night. He was, a he was the house drummer on the MTV awards. Oh, wow. So yeah, he was there. He's right now. He's actively touring with Janet Jackson. He he was with Rihanna, Demi Lovato, um, and just goes on and on and on. He's he's actually going to be in the next issue of Modern Drummer. Uh, wow! I think that'll come out this week or next week. But yeah, he's there, and uh, couldn't be a nicer guy again. You know, when he's in town, comes over. You know, he's like you know, one of the family. So yeah, it just keeps on going. <laughs> so oh. I'm just so, so grateful that, you know, for these guys. Well, and, it's, oh. it's amazing to me, you know, I mean, it, it really is. And, you know, one of our traditions uh, here on the drum shuffle, and, and this will be special, I think for our listeners, Grant, we want a good piece of advice. And this is coming from, you know, the teacher to the drumming stars, really. I mean, that's that's what you are now. Um, give us all a good piece of advice to take out there into our, you know, semi-pro or professional drumming careers. What have you learned over the years? Well, I, I, the, the, I'm going to uh, first of all, I'm going to go back to attitude and gratitude and you've got to wake up every day, and if you start thinking negative, if you start getting angry, put that out. You've got to practice. Do not let that get into your to your brain. You know, it's it's all about being positive. Don't be afraid to meet these other drummers. Don't be afraid to to play with anybody, and just just get out there. Get that fear. Get the anger the fear out of your system. And it might take a couple of years, but you got to practice it. The other thing is every day, learn something, keep your ears open. Don't close your, don't close your ears off to any style of music. Open your ears. Um, you're going to learn something and it's going to be, it's going to be really cool. Um, every style has their little, um, you know, just things, magic that makes it work, whether it is a simple country beat or some ridiculous uh, jazz fusion thing. Everything, respect it, learn something every day. Keep your ears open. 
Don't be one of those guys that say, ah, I hate that kind of music. You know, don't do that. Yeah. So I would just say, yeah, it's all bad attitude and just thirst for learning. Wonderful, wonderful words of wisdom from Grant Menifee. Uh, Grant, thank you so much for taking time to come on today. We really appreciate it. It goes without saying you're welcome here anytime. We have to have you back. I think we've merely scratched the surface. Um, we would love to have you back in the future to, to talk more about educating uh, drummers. Um, I think what you do is just fantastic work. Uh, everybody, uh, Grant is not hard to find. Uh, just a, a cursory search uh, for Grant Menifee on the internet. You can always find the links, uh, you know, on my show's website. Um, Grant, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Oh, you are welcome, Jamie. I'll, I'll talk to you anytime you want to want to do it. Um, it's just fun to talk about drums and you know, all these great drummers out there too. So yeah, yeah, I uh, mean, we could do a full hour on Nate, you know, and, 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 yeah. and, I'm, and I'm sure he would love <laughs> listening to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if you ever, you know, you ever want to talk to some up and coming guys, um, uh, you know, like I gave you two names earlier. So, you know, in the future, maybe I'll give you some more. That would be great. We love talking, <laughs> love talking to great drummers and, and just talking shop. That's what we're all about yeah. here. Grant, again, thank you so much. And we will talk to you very, very soon, sir. You are welcome. Thank you. All right. Have a good one now. All right, guys and girls, that's going to do it for episode 32 of the Drum Shuffle. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. We can't do what we do without every single one of you guys listening in. As always, we love hearing from you throughout the week. The Drum Shuffle podcast at gmail.com is our email address to reach out to us. Our web address is thedrumshuffle.com, and you can find more information about me at jamieeds.com. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're using to listen in today. It helps us tremendously to continue to grow. Uh, you are not going to want to miss some of the guests that we have coming up for you. If all goes well next week, we will have our first ever in-person interview here on the Drum Shuffle podcast. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully, uh, let's all keep our fingers crossed that that works out the way I hope it will. Uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. So until next time, may your head stay strong and your sticks never break. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.